Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney, and I have some new additions to my shelving back here. If you caught the latest podcast episode, Jacqueline and I opened a box from friend of the show, Tyler. I joke about it, but he is one of my Twitter pals, and he's one of the OG listeners to the podcast. He sent over a little care package after calling me out for not having enough cool stuff back there. So he sent two signed pucks, one signed by Patrick Kane and one signed by Victor Stahlberg. And then we have a Dylan Strom card back here from when he was on the Erie Otters and that is also signed. So thank you again, Tyler. I greatly appreciate it. And I had to get them on here and have them visible for you so I can have more cool stuff on my shelves. There's no real good segue. So I will just transition into saying the Blackhawks are now in a fight for the last playoff spot with the Nashville Predators. And they have two very important games coming up and they are against the Detroit Red Wings. So before we get to the first game against Detroit, which is on Thursday, let's talk about how this Monday night game went against the Columbus Blue Jackets. We'll go through the questions that I had for that one and uh, see how this game went down. Question number one, what the heck does the lineup look like? So Monday was also the trade deadline. The Blackhawks made some moves. They traded Carl Soderberg, Matthias Janmark, and Matthew Highmore. All three of those guys have been in the Hawks lineup most nights. So I was very curious what the lineup was going to look like on Monday when they hit the ice against the Blue Jackets. Here's how they started the game. Hagel, Suter, and Patrick Kane were on the first line. Dabrinkit, Doc, and Dylan Strom were on the second line. Kubalik, Kurashev, and Hinestroza made up the third line. And Connolly, Kampf, and Carpenter made up the fourth line. Brett Connolly coming over in that trade with the Florida Panthers, not the one for Vinny Hinestroza, the other one. The one that sent Lucas Walmark and Lucas Carlson to the Panthers in exchange exchange for Connolly, Stillman, and Borgstrom. Speaking of Stillman, the defensive pairings went as follows. D pairing number one was Riley Stillman and Connor Murphy. D pairing two was Duncan Keith and Adam Boquist. And D pairing number three was Calvin DeHaan and Wyatt Kalnick. Nikita Zadorov was the healthy scratch. Think of that what you will. I don't agree with it. I would have scratched number 44, but we all know that is the case. And he did end up getting walked on one of CBJ's goals on Monday, but you know, it's fine. And in net, we had Kevin Lonkinen. So overall, the lineup really wasn't a whole lot different. Connolly slotted in there on that fourth line and Riley Stillman was in instead of Nikita Zadorov on defense. The lines didn't stay like that all game. They kind of got put in a blender at times, but the game was really chaotic and just a very strange game overall. But that's how they started. We'll see what the lineup looks like on Thursday when they take on the wings. Question two, can the Blackhawks score first? Nope, they couldn't. We talked about in the last video how scoring first allows your team to not be chasing the game. And it's always just generally a good idea to get on the board first, but they did not do that. 14 minutes and two seconds into the first period, Stefan Mateau got on the board first for the Columbus Blue Jackets. It was a first period that generally just wasn't that great for the Hawks, but 16 minutes and 25 seconds into the first period, Duncan Keith scored a goal on the power play. You know a game is weird when Duncan Keith scores. You know a game is weirder when Duncan Keith scores on the power play. And it was indeed a very weird game. But hey, Keith got his second goal of the season, the first goal of the game for the Blackhawks and a power play goal, because why not? This was another game where the Hawks power play looked atrocious, but we'll get to that. Six minutes and 11 seconds into the second period, who else but Patrick friggin' Line? You know, Gold drought be damned, the Blackhawks come to town. He is just a scoring machine. That was his 11th goal of the season, the second goal of the game for the Columbus Blue Jackets, and they once again had the lead. This time it was two to one. And that's how it remained going in to the second intermission. Third period, the Blackhawks are down two to one. They need one goal to tie it two goals to win it, you know, assuming Columbus doesn't get another goal. Details, details. Six minutes and 15 seconds into the third period, Philip Kurashev. He gets on the board. That was his eighth goal of the season and Patrick Kane registered his 40th assist of the season on that goal. That's just insane. About two minutes later, eight minutes and 21 seconds into the third period, Brett frigging Connolly, the new guy, he scored to get the Hawks the lead. That made the game three to two in favor of the team from Chicago. And what a weird goal it was too. He forced a turnover, cut to the middle of the ice, just shoveled the puck toward Eunice Corposalo, 
and it went under his pads, I think? It was a very weird goal. It didn't look like it should have gone in, but it did go in. Brett Connolly got his first goal as a Chicago Blackhawk, gave the Blackhawks the lead in the game, and there were just all sorts of good feelings flying around. Riley Stillman was on the ice for that goal as well, and when they went to their little hug, happy pile after the goal, he seemed very happy for his teammate, a guy who also came over in that trade from the Florida Panthers. It just made my heart all warm and fuzzy. What did not make my heart warm and fuzzy was about three minutes later, Patrick friggin' Lyon, eh? Again, scored on the Blackhawks. Because he's not allowed to score against anybody else. Oh no, only the Blackhawks. He can only score when Chicago is in town. This, my friends, was the goal that Calvin DeHaan got absolutely walked on. Patrick Lyon got the puck behind his own net or next to his own net and just skated 200 feet down toward Kevin Lonkin and blew completely past past Calvin DeHaan, who could have, you know, shoved him or something, and just took the puck and swept it around Kevin and tucked it in behind him in the empty net because Kevin couldn't move fast enough to stop it. Between DeHaan and Kevin Lonkinen, somebody should have been able to stop that shot, but they didn't. Patrick Laine got on the board and the game was tied three to three. I'm telling you, it was a weird game. We knew it would be because Duncan Keith, once again, scored a goal, scored on the power play. <sighs> but whatever, the game remained three to three and it went to overtime. Because of course it went to overtime. It's a game between the Blackhawks and the Blue Dragons. When doesn't it go to overtime? The Hawks did not look very good to start the overtime period. Patrick Kane and Alex Dabrinkit were out there and they didn't do anything too exciting. So onto the ice comes our Lord and Savior, Brandon Hagel. Wyatt Kalnick is the defenseman out there on that overtime unit. Kirby Doc is the other forward. Kalnick gets the puck to Kirby. Kirby skates into the offensive zone. Out of nowhere, here comes Brandon Hagel flying down the other wing. Kirby just sends a beautiful pass over to Hagel and he just rips it past Eunice Corpusalo. The Blackhawks win in overtime. It's a Brandon Hagel goal off of a beautiful pass from Kirby Doc. And uh, there's Wyatt Kalnick on the back end. That's three very young guys on this roster setting up a beautiful play for the overtime winner. You 100% love to see it. And I'm pretty sure that's the first goal Hagel has scored actually like shooting on the goaltender. But what a good time to get it! The shot that he released from his stick was so beautiful, it was so quick and so precise, you'd think that was an elite scorer out there. But it is not an elite scorer, it is the elite hard worker, and he gets the overtime goal, and the Blackhawks go home happy. And all of us sitting at home are just wondering what the heck just happened? That was such a strange game. Thankfully they won in overtime because they really need these points. That put them back within two of the Nashville Predators, but the Preds won tonight, so there is now a four point differential again between the two teams. And the Blackhawks have a pretty tough schedule coming up. They do have the two against Detroit, but then they have three straight against the Nashville Predators, the team they are chasing, the team that they have not beat at all so far this year, and they've looked very bad while playing them. And then, you know, they have a game or two against Tampa, a game or two against the Florida Panthers, and then there's the Carolina Hurricanes, because why not? And then they finish the regular season with back-to-back -back games against the Dallas Stars. Y'all better buckle your seatbelts because it's gonna be a wild ride to the finish. But we are not yet at the end of the season. We are facing the Detroit Red Wings on Thursday. So here's my three questions for that game. Question one, can the Blackhawks keep Richard Ponick off the score sheet? So the Red Wings and the Washington Capitals made a pretty big trade yesterday on trade deadline day. Detroit sent Anthony Mantha to the Capitals. In return, the Capitals sent the Red Wings a first round pick, a second round pick, Jacob Vrana, and Richard Panic, former Blackhawk. So as these things go, I would not be surprised in the least if Richard Panic came out and got a goal against his former team, a hat trick against his former team. None of that would surprise me. So the Blackhawks need to do their job and hopefully keep him off of the score sheet. That's right. I don't even want him getting an assist. I'm gonna sound real silly if he's not even in the lineup, but it's the Detroit Red Wings. Who else are they gonna play? I'm not looking forward to him making me look silly. At least you can point back to this video and say, hey, that's your fault. Or say, hey, 
You were right, they kept him off the score sheet and they won the game. Which one's it gonna be? Question two, will one of the Blackhawks new guys get on the score sheet? It was Brett Connolly in the last game. And while not exactly a new guy, but a newer guy in the previous game against the Columbus Blue Jackets, Wyatt Kalnick got his first goal of the season, his first NHL goal. And in the two games before that one, Vinny Henestrosa registered an assist on two dominant Kubelik goals in back-to-back -back games. So since the Hawks have started making moves, some new guys have started doing some stuff, so could they continue that trend into this Thursday night game against the Detroit Red Wings? We shall see. Question three, will they have movement on the power play? Remember how I said the power play didn't look great on Monday night even though Duncan Keith got a goal? Yeah, the power play didn't look good at all. They absolutely regressed to just deferring to Patrick Kane on the half wall where he proceeded to just stand still. I think I talked about this in the last video, how they've just gone back to doing that. Oh, there were a couple drop passes in there as well. And we didn't get to see much of Adam Boquist on the power play because unfortunately near the beginning of the game, it may have even been his first shift. He got hit in the mouth area with a puck and he's suffering from concussion-like symptoms now. Hopefully he doesn't have a concussion after all. Hopefully they were just keeping him out for precaution, but Jeremy Colleton did say after the game that it was concussion-like symptoms, so hoping the best for Boquist. You never want to see a guy get a concussion. Those are scary. They're unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get really, and Boquist was having a very good season. But hockey aside, hockey isn't what matters. The person matters most, and I hope Boquist is okay. But since he's not on the power play, the other guys are gonna have to really step up and be better and, you know, move their feet past the puck, stop with this whole Patrick Kane just holding the puck on the half wall and trying to force the pass to Alex to bring it through the slot. Every team knows it's coming. Every team shuts it down, ends up being a turnover, goes all the way down the ice to our goaltender. And sometimes that even results in a shorthanded goal against the Hawks. Now, isn't that just fun? No. It's very not fun, so I'm gonna need them to not do that. I'm gonna need them to start scoring on the power play and looking like they care on the power play. There's no better team to revive their special teams against than the Detroit Red Wings. Of course, now they have Jacob Vrana and Richard Ponick, so who the heck knows what's gonna happen? But we can hope for some good things. So, those are my three questions for Thursday night's matchup against the Detroit Red Wings. Do you have any questions heading into that game? Do you have any questions about the season as a whole? leave those in the comments down below. And like I said in the last video, if there's any Blackhawks prospects that you're interested in hearing about, especially if they play for the Ice Hogs, I would be glad to tell you my thoughts on them. So leave those in the comments down below as well. Uh, and tell me if you think the Hawks are actually going to make the playoffs or if they are just gonna barely miss it. And which would you prefer? That's a lot of questions. I have apparently given you homework, so I'm gonna end this now before I end up giving you more. If you wanna hear more from me or From Center Ice, you can head on over to fromcenterice.com. Check out the links to all the stuff over there. Catch up with the latest podcast episodes. We just recorded one last night. I'm editing it tonight. By the time you see this, it'll most likely be out. So you can click on that, watch that. You can see us open the box for the stuff that Tyler sent us. And we talk about the trade deadline and some other stuff, including science and spontaneous combustion. I don't know. We went off on a lot of tangents. It was interesting, but it was a fun episode. So make sure to check that out. If you are a social media person, you can follow us on all of the different platforms. The links for those are all in the description. All of that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. If you could like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed yet, that would be wonderful. And let's hope that the Blackhawks can get two very important points out of this Thursday game against Detroit. I'll catch you all after that one. Bye guys. Thank you all for watching. Please hit that subscribe button to catch more From Center Ice content. If you could, hit the like button on this video, maybe share it with a friend or two. And while you're here, check out the podcast playlist and catch up on some old episodes. We will catch y'all next time. Bye!